selfie. I don't think I ever really saw him in his prime. I got an inkling of it when I first watched him play in the beach and then at that Nationals indoors. But we're mainly talking about the beach, but I, I think if you include indoors, Selzink was great indoors. Yeah, that's the part that, like I said, not many people have footage of, and the only people that know how amazingly good he was were the ones who witnessed it. And I think he, yes. I've heard fans talk about it. I've heard, you know, Chris Marlowe maybe mention it, but, you know, guys like you who are also on that Mount Rushmore of volleyball, to hear yeah, that of from Marlo you. Marlowe was younger than me, so I don't think he saw him. But Marlowe played in high school and went to some of those nationals. I know he was at the nationals in 68, but I don't think he was there at Philadelphia in 62. Yeah, who I else mean, was I, really great there? Uh, that's the first time I saw, you know, all the good, the, the Solaris were there. They played for New York then, and they really hit the ball hard. And they had a bunch of guys that could really hit the ball. Like Ernie and Rudy you're speaking of? Yeah, they played for the New York YMCA or something. And uh, Lang knows much more about that than I do because, you know, he played on, on for eight years. Uh, he was a great setter indoors. And he played on that Hollywood Y team with Gene, so he knows firsthand. Well, he played with Celtics team, and they usually played against the Hollywood team. And in the 62 Nationals, the Hollywood team won. And I thought Selznick was unbelievable. I always remember how good he was. Wow, that's saying a lot. Because Selznick was that good. He was incredible. He never got blocked. It's like he saw everything. And he hit the ball when the finals came that year. I always remembered. In fact, I was with Boardwell then. And Boardwell went up to him and said, how come you hit the ball so much harder at Nationals? And that's the truth. He hit the ball so hard. It was, he really hit the ball hard. And never Celtic was a great hitter. And on the beach... When he was good, I can just, like Lang said, he was just devastating. And, and I, I'm pretty sure, I don't think there was ever anybody any better than Gene Selman. Wow, that's awesome. And I, and I know Lang, you could make a case for Lang because he had such a great record. But you know, Selman had an unbelievable record. I think he's... He, his beach record, he played 62 tournaments. He won 37 and got 19 seconds. I mean, basically, he never got worse than a second, hardly, in his whole career. And, you know, there was a lot of years where they only played, like, sometimes two, three, four tournaments a year. Wow. I think Selfink had the best record on on the beach. Holtzman had a great record, but I think people tend to think he played before there were really a lot of, of really good hitters. Yeah, like he was when, playing against a bunch of picnic players. That's pretty much what people think of, I'm sure. Well, I think Selzink, when after Selzink and Holtzman, Selzink and Holtzman, from what I understand, they played... 14 tournaments and one twelve, and they hardly ever got beat. And then Selzink played with Lang, and I think th there was, you know, probably more competition as far as good hitters then. And Brian O'Hare played then, and they were really good hitters. I mean, they were a great team to me. Probably a little better than what Lang thinks, because I, I, that's who I started playing against was Brighton O'Hare and Lang and Selzink, and I thought both those teams were great teams. If you get to pick out of Selznick in his prime, even though you didn't see it, or O'Hare in his prime, who was better? Well, 
That's a really good question. I think Lang thinks that O'Hara mentally was one of the three or four toughest players ever. He was a great hitter. He could hit back sets unbelievably, and you'd have to kill him to beat him. That's what they always said about you and Lang. The, yeah, and I think Holtzman was that way. I think Selznick was that way more indoors than on the beach. And I think Lang, you know, he, he that's the one thing with Selznick. He thought they sometimes got put in the losers when they shouldn't have been and things like that. Because Gene wasn't but, uh, as focused against the lesser opponents because he wasn't... Yes, I was think like so. like playing against kids. He would do... Until it got later yeah, in the match, he then he'd step up. Because he was Team Selzing. Too much but dancing Selzing the night and before. O'Hara were both great players, and, and O'Hara was a great hitter. He could really hit back sets, and he kept the ball in the court, and he had great range. And he, he was a great indoor player, too. I've only seen the pictures, and he looked like he could uh, bring the bring the heat. Yes. Yeah, he was really good. Unreal! Wow, that's a pretty uh, amazing career to be able to say you saw and or played with all those guys like that, and to have someone like you be able to vouch for them. Well, my standards were to be able to. They were, they were my standard for volleyball. Who Brent was? O'Hara and, and Lang and Selznick. And, and I think people back then, because we played the, the longer scoring system, it's human nature. If, if you have to play Brighton O'Hara or Lang and Selznick in the best two out of three, and it could take three hours, you have to be in fairly good shape so you're going to practice if you have to play the scoring system they play now the game's over in an hour and human nature is you don't have to practice as much so i've always sort of thought that no matter who the player is if you practice more you're going to be a little better than you are if you don't practice as much and that that means dollhauser selznick cart sinjin anybody and back then, you know, when I first started playing, I had to practice all the time because I wanted to get so I could compete against the best players. Because you started the game late in your 20s. Yeah. yeah, I was a senior at UCLA, and I, I was, uh, I think it was, it's hard to remember everything exactly right now, but I think I really started playing in the summer of 19. 19- 60. I graduated and then I played on the summer some that summer to try to learn how to play and then I went in the army in the fall and after I got out of the army I went in for six months then I really started playing seriously. Is it true you were an extra on MASH? Yes. What did you Actually, do? Actually I was converted to SAG and you can see me they converted about six people to satisfy the guilds, and that was the best job I ever had because we did. We just got to. We we're on the football field, and I got to know Ben Davidson, uh, Con Cannon, the quarterback, and a couple other guys. Uh, the fullback, uh, I want to say Woodley. He played for Philadelphia. He was a really good running back. And those guys are really neat guys, and they were r- really nice to us. And, and so I just sat, and we sort of threw footballs around, and, and they hired a semi-pro team to do the actual filming, and I was just picked as, a, as a, one of the guys to satisfy the guilds, but I didn't go out and do any of the football stuff because they didn't want to have anybody get hurt, and they hired a semi-pro team to do all the football stuff because they paid them a set amount where if they'd have paid guild people, we'd have been getting stunt pay all the time because they were getting hit, you know, doing stuff where you get big-time money. 
So it was the most fun job I ever had all the years I worked in the movies. Did you light a cigarette for somebody in one of those match yeah, episodes? Yeah, you can see me. I haven't seen this for years, but I was sitting on the bench, and my friends could tell it was me, and I was <laughs> smoking a <this> cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> all right, just come clean with us, Ron. What kind of cigarette was it? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Did you give that habit up, or are you still on it? Well, I think they, you know, we were supposed to be, you know, I, I don't know the right word, you know. <laughs> we weren't in training football players. And, and I remember they had me smoking a cigarette on the bench. And, and I think that you saw, it's been years since I've seen that, but I remember you could recognize me. It probably was a candy cigarette in your case. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Priceless. I love that. That's awesome. Good stuff. Yeah, that was that was a, a, a fun uh, job I had. And you basically made a living off of playing on the beach, winning tournaments, and then being an extra in TV shows and movies at that time. Well, I did do extra work for about, oh my gosh, maybe eight or ten years. And the reason it was so good is that you could call in for your jobs whenever you wanted. And in the summertime, I could concentrate on volleyball. And then in the fall, I would try to really concentrate on doing the movie jobs. And I knew um, our next door neighbor when I grew up at my parents' house, his name was Paul Cameron. And he was... He led the nation in total offense. He was a tailback under Red Sanders at UCLA, first string All American. And he was, uh, he worked in the movie business and he was like the first assistant director for a lot of Disney movies. Well, he liked me and I'd call him up and say, you know, I'm, I can work now. And he would put me in as a stand in and I'd get steady work. So I did that for a few years, and it, it enabled me. I could also get unemployment, and then I had enough money to play volleyball, especially concentrated on it in the summertime. Wow. And, and that's what I that's what I did in those years. And then I also I was in Telluride before it was a ski area. I always went to the mountains and went traveling in those years, and I knew Colorado really well, and I bought three lots on Main Street in Telluride back then for $1,200. You were an investment guru and you didn't even know it. Well, I, I made investments for nothing, and those lots now are worth millions. I traded them for my house in Sun Valley. I got my house for free. That was a bond, a bunch of acres too out there, wasn't it? I have acreage in Telluride in Sun Valley. I just have my house and a couple other lots. But I got stuff back then that really appreciated. And over the years, you know, I sold some of it, and uh, it also really helped because. When you bought stuff in Telluride, Sun Valley, or Jackson back then, it appreciated unbelievably. You're like Kramer from that Seinfeld show, who they always said fell ass backwards into money, doing what he wanted to in life, pretty much. <laughs> well, I hit the, the appreciation of the ski resorts perfectly. I think Wes I mean, Welch would probably appreciate that story. Atomic Chalet. Yeah, I've been where he lives in, uh, up above Salt Lake City. You know Wes, then? Uh, y yes, I do. He used to play with Andrew Smith, and of course I'm good friends with St. John, so I know Andrew real well. And Andrew used to come and stay at my house in the <laughs> Valley for years and ski. You give him so, some yeah, modeling I, I, tips I, at all I, when he was I, out there? I beg your pardon? Did you give him some modeling tips when he was out there by you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably how he got but those Boston West Welch loves to ski, and he used to come to 
Sun Valley and ski with us. He seems yeah, like a really gone. nice guy. He appreciates the old school site and the old school players with stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, he's r- really a nice guy. I liked watching him play with Troy Tanner later on. Uh, he had some really good finishes. I watched him play in Milwaukee a bit and, uh, on the AVP, and he was a heck of a player and an amazing skier, too, from what I've heard. Yeah, and he was more Sinjin's time, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, and I, I got to know him, and he was he came to Sun Valley three or four times. You know, we skied together. Yeah, how neat, and, yeah. I, I talked I to him a few and, times, and... He's uh, appreciative of uh, the old school guys like you, which I think is says a lot. Oh, well, that's neat. Well, if you talk to him, tell him I said hi. I certainly will. I think it'd be an honor for Wes Welch to hear that Ron Von Hagen uh, well, I remembers him, him and says high, uh, has high praise for him, which, uh, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, I haven't really seen him for quite a while now after... I met Connie, and I've been over in Jackson. I sort of, you know, I haven't seen him for all those years. Yeah, I think he has a nice, uh, I don't know if it's a resort or a chalet there, there where he does stuff with, and sounds yeah, like he's doing well for himself. It, it's a bed and breakfast, I think. I've seen pictures on he on uh, Facebook, and looks like he's doing really well for himself, so I'm happy well, for him. Well, I went there once. Nice place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really like him. He's a great guy. Yeah, he seems pretty down to earth. I asked him about Milwaukee, and he said he had fun playing here, but he really appreciated the beer. Shocker. (laughs) (laughs) And he loves the mountains and loves to ski. Yeah, it must be rough being that good at two sports. Well, I think he's got things worked out pretty good, but...